point and shoot. Simple instructions for simple cameras, right? They were basic, obligatory, omnipresent, in the hand of somebody at every family get-together, wedding, funeral, holiday, vacation. They were the iPhone camera app before there was an iPhone. I mean, literally everyone had one, right? Your mom, your best friend, your dad, presidents, celebrities, heroes and villains alike. Hell, even your cousin Bobby could drive one of these things and he was, well, your cousin Bobby, right? And that's because point and shoots are simple little cameras for simple little people who don't know how to use the big boy cameras like us real photographers, right? Wrong. Point and shoots are freaking amazingly designed works of art that usually combine modern aesthetics, brilliant optical formulas, functionality, pop culture, affordability, all in a deceptively simple and easy to use package that anyone can work with. And in 1997, a little company called Fujifilm, you may have heard of them, created this, the GA645WI, a camera that some consider to be one of the finest and largest point and shoots ever created. But how does this behemoth of a camera actually stack up? Does it deserve a place in the modern photographer's bag, or is it better left in the shelf? An interesting artifact of a bygone era. So I recently picked this guy up in a Facebook trade, and I was pretty excited for a number of reasons. The first reason is simply because I don't have a lot of experience with medium format point and shoots. I have a lot of experience with medium formats, I have a lot of experience with point and shoots, but I have virtually none when it comes to combining the two in one package. I also have fairly little experience shooting 28mm equivalent lenses. Now this camera has a 45mm f4 lens, which when you do the math to find out what the 35mm equivalent is, this lens has about the same field of view as a 28mm. So for me, it was a little bit of a double whammy. I got the new medium format point and shoot, and I got the new field of view to work with, all in the same package. So to really see the performance of this thing, I decided to make my dedicated stills film camera for the last couple months. And with very few exceptions, every single picture that I have taken since the new year has been with this camera. So what did I find out? Well, this should be no surprise to most of you who are watching this channel, but this camera is a great day-to-day -day camera for basically everything. There's a reason that most cell phone camera lenses are in the 26 to 28 millimeter range. It's just a really great solution for documenting whatever. One of the things that I always end up worrying about with medium format cameras is just how weighty they can sometimes be. For instance, my Pentax 6.7 is like 37 pounds or something like that, but this camera is surprisingly light and can live around my neck all day long without me having any issues at all. That lightweight form lends itself nicely to the next more specific form of life documentation that I want to talk about, which is street photography. The 28 millimeter field of view has been the focal length of choice for many a street ninja and I was eager to find out what all the hype was about. Plus I knew that the camera had a nearly silent leaf shutter, which is perfect for grabbing those quiet, intimate, candid moments on the street, right? <laughs> the focusing motor though is, well, it's a bit of a moment destroyer. So why is it so good at street photography then? Well, that's because of the manual focus settings. In the manual focus mode, you actually set the lens prior to taking the photograph. So you set it at a distance, you focus the lens, it extends and it stays there. Therefore, the next time that you have to take a photo, it's not moving around and making a bunch of noise beforehand. That way you just figure out your depth of field, you decide where you want your subject to be, and when they walk into the frame, you just snap away nice and quiet, it's never an issue. that I found useful for this style of street photography is the second shutter button that is on the face of the camera. I'm not sure what they had in mind when they designed the camera, but I've been using it to shoot from my hip. While it's not particularly uncomfortable to shoot with the normal shutter button in this situation, I do find it more comfortable to shoot with the front-facing shutter button, and it's there, so why not? 
The other thing worth mentioning is the orientation of the viewfinder. When you're wearing it around your neck like this, the camera is actually in landscape orientation, and when it's held up to your eye like this, it's actually in portrait orientation. This is backwards from how most cameras are designed, and it just has to do with the way that the film is pulled across the body. The point is though, when it's hanging from your neck like this, it is inherently going to be in a landscape orientation, which lends itself to shooting wide from the hip anyways, and is much easier to use as a result. The last thing that I ended up using this camera for quite a bit is just straight up portraits, both inside and outside of the studio. Normally I live on a 50 or an 85 for this kind of work, so it took a little bit of me getting used to, but I gotta say, when you nail it with this camera, it looks really awesome. The lens has this really delightful way of kind of pushing out the background and laying your subject slightly flat against it, and then the background just kind of, it just subtly blurs into something, not quite nothing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> actually lends itself, as many people have found over the course of time, to really great environmental portraiture. You don't want the background to just get obliterated like you would on a longer or a faster lens. Instead, you have a little bit of the signature of the place that you were at. It gives a little bit of context to where you were photographing and it has a little bit more of a storytelling element. Plus, you actually have to be a better photographer and really slow down and compose your images. So after all that shooting, here are the major takeaways that I want to give you. First, on the positive side of things, overall, this is an excellent camera that will give you excellent results. The lens is sharp, the body seems well constructed, the internal center weighted meter is predictable, accurate, and easy to use. The autofocus has been mostly reliable as long as you're willing to look down in the corner of the viewfinder to verify that the lens is focusing where you want it to be. The control wheel that you use to change all of your settings has strong tactile positive feeling clicks and is super easy to use with or without gloves which has been kind of important this winter. I like that there's a shutter release, I like that you can sync the flash at any speed, I like that you can superimpose your metadata onto your super huge nice big negatives. It's also really cool that you can use it as just a straight up point and shoot where you let the camera do all the thinking or take over and use it as this manual street travel fixed lens camera of beastiousness. <laughs> In fact, there are only two really big things that I don't like about this camera, and the first one is less about the design of the camera itself and is more about my particular copy. That first thing is that the parallax correction in the viewfinder has stopped working on my camera. In a working model, these lines should move in accordance to how close or far the lens is focused. This is designed to help you make sure that what you see in your viewfinder is the same thing that the lens is seeing on the camera since they're not exactly the same on rangefinders. It's certainly not a big deal by any means, but I have noticed some weirdly composed images here and there, and it feels much better for my ego to blame it on the camera instead of myself. The last thing that really is about the camera though are these two little control buttons above the wheel right here. While every other button and feature on this camera is big and bold and easy to use, these little fiddly ass buttons are kind of a giant pain in the ass. They're how you change the camera into manual focus mode, how you change the exposure compensation, and how you change the shutter speed while you're shooting in manual mode, and they're basically impossible to use if you have sausage fingers like mine, or have gloves on because it's cold out. But at the end of the day, this camera is really an autofocus point and shoot, and the manual settings that you get, including the manual focus, are really just bonuses on top of an already pretty damn cool camera. So, does this camera deserve a place in the modern photographer's kit? Yes, or at least it'll be staying in mind. Whether or not you need a giant point and shoot camera is kind of up to you, and whether or not a 28 millimeter equivalent lens is right for you is kind of up to you as well, but I find this camera to be a lot of fun to use. I really enjoy the images that I get out of it, and it will be staying inside of my bag for the foreseeable future. As always, thank you guys for watching. Please hit that like and subscribe button, and I will see you guys in the next video. <laughs>